Ready Player Will. Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. This is a quick overview of the Army Plate. New item added to the game this week as part of the Ifrit Raid. You only have this week to grind it, so I wanted to do an early PSA to not miss out on getting your copy or two of it. Now, I'm not going to clickbait you. This is not the most revolutionary piece of equipment. It's not heads and tails amazing and so much better than everything else. But you should definitely have a copy or two of this, so don't miss out. And so real quickly, looking at the actual armor itself, and before I even start, should you want to go ahead and grind this, you can, if you have June the Celestial, you can solo this raid uh, in a four-person four, play, a four room by yourself. You just join the four-person room. Don't let anyone else join. Just go in by yourself. And as long as you just turn off all your buffs except the Bells TMR, a Joom is just going to auto that boss to death. So uh, there's you can probably sub some of these cards in too. I'm clearing this boss with 14 turns left, so certainly room to not min-max everything. But uh, before, just wanted to get that out of the way. But the armor itself, you know, you have three different builds here, the vital, the shield, and the barrier. By now, we're pretty comfortable always building the highest attribute version of the build, so shield in this instance, where you're getting 567 HP, a 20 defense, 5 spirit, and 15 crit evade. Some of these numbers will get cut in half because of trust stone so we'll talk about that more toward the end but the biggest effect of this is that it reduces physical and magical damage by 15 percent the larger the aoe we see this mechanic way more nowadays i just did a video on some of the percentages on how it works it's essentially replacing AoE res as we know it because you can so easily crush that AoE res. Uh, Cloud is coming in with AoE res penetration, so is in Sephiroth. So the good old-fashioned AoE res is kind of getting a nerf in the current day and age of the game. And this is rising in its place to sort of take it over in certain respects. And so, you know, kicking things off, this looks great, but realistically we need to decide on... What are the alternatives that this might actually end up replacing anyway? And so if we're looking at, you know, this top line being all of the UR and MR armors that are available in the game, this bottom row is some of the best TMR armors you might equip. And technically helms uh, are part of that slot. You can't equip both an armor and a helm. You can only pick one. And of the helms in the game, Dragoon Helm was really one of the only good ones, quite frankly. And so, you know, starting with this list process of elimination here, you know, a handful of these are either power crept or straight up just not good for this meta. The knight armor, certainly uh, good for magic metas, not even worth putting on at this time. A couple other of these are really good, but a little more niche. The Platinum Armor, you know, you have to grind free match medals. And the Azure Dragon Armor, only like Lancer-oriented units can wear this. And a little bit more niche in what it brings. So those aren't really like an... They're not bad, but they're not apples to apples in what we're trying to think about here. And these TMRs on the bottom, they're actually very, very good. I recommend equipping these, trying to use these, because they are they do have some game-changing effects. But you're not equipping the Army Plate, you know, the ability effects that it has. So this is kind of like a different category that, again, apples to apples. Not saying don't equip these, they're very good, but you would equip them for different motivations than you would the army plate, right? And then finally, you have to consider, yeah, you know what, there are accessories that, that do take up a valuable slot here. And most of these accessories, these are all the ones that, you know, you use most prevalently that I give a personal thumbs up on. Most of them, again, you use for different reasons. I'm not going to compare the army plate to the Alexandrite ring because you wear them for two completely different reasons. You know, the Genji glove is a completely different kind of equipment. And so, although they're good, that's why they're the green color, it's not good for the sake of like a comparative analysis. The pod accessories certainly are because they have AOE and unit res. The element rings certainly are because they bring that element resistance. So you're talking about damage mitigation. We want to try to keep apples and oranges, right? Which process elimination really leaves us with the Maximilian armor and the Brigandine armor. And we're going to look at those closer now. The Maximilian armor, to me, first off, I do think is better than the army plate. Let me get that straight. This is just a flat 10% reduction of all damage when you're above half health. It's crit evade 30, debuff weakening of 50. A nice fat 22 defense, an enormous HP stat, and 15 crit of aid. I think this is superior to the army plate. But keep in mind, you can only get one Maximilian armor in the game. And right now, one of the things that we're seeing is kind of this uptick in armor users where Ashen King Mont, Joom the Spring Celestial, Cloud coming on the future, Dario and Volk and Lucio and Eld and Halloween Lucio, Veritas of the Heavens, Old Astrius, Eremite of the Bolt. You know, for those of you that are still using some of the older units here, Bart's and Wing Stern and Alphonse are still viable to a degree. And if you're really reaching to the bag, you know, the good old fashioned King Mont tank is certainly still 
an option for some. And if you're going super niche, you get like Engelbert and Hyo, technically armor users too. But the bottom line is there is an uptick in armor users. And so if only one Maximilian armor exists, well, if you have a second unit in the team that needs to equip an armor, is the arm you played a viable option? And the answer is yes for me, because when we look at the Brigandine, this is the plus six version we're looking at at the moment. Roughly similar in the defense, 22 versus 20 is not a huge difference. A little more HP, sure, you're looking at about 300 for HP extra. It does technically give you the uh, 5% more HP because you really should have this on a trust stone passive anyway. So realistically, you're just getting an extra 5% of your unit's base HP. That's not enormous. And that's basically it. But And the AOE res of 10 looks really good, but you have to recall there's a lot more crush mechanics in the game at the moment that's kind of reducing the effectiveness of that. And so just kind of walking through the way I'm thinking about that, this chart that just popped up at the bottom is what that 10 AOE res really looks like post a unit crushing it and so just bear with me here i'll walk through the table i know there's a lot of numbers you have like three different levels of crush the the helen of the black rose like the astrius one is the most common at 60 percent aoe crush but you know 50 percent exists 2p has it lunar new year Oberon is at 30 percent. so you could look at these bottom lines but i'm going to focus on the 60 percent crush because that's really like the the bar if you know what i mean and, and debuff weakening does affect how much your AOE res gets crushed by. And so if you're looking at a flat 60% crush of your AOE res, well, that 10 is really only four. If you do have 15% weakening, it's still four. If you go up to 35%, you know, it's really six AOE res instead of the 10. And if you have really high AOE res at 50%, it's only seven instead of 10. The bottom line is that AOE res of 10 going against all these units with the crush mechanics nowadays, it's really only four to six AOE res. Really Realistically, four for most of your units. And so when you, you know, really compare the army plate to the Brigantine, you know, there's, to me, three of the more popular AOE shapes here. You have your diamond, in which you'll get the full 15% reduction. You have this new type that's more popular. It's that square kind of shape. A lot of new units have this. It's a 9% reduction, roughly speaking, of on the army plate. And then this regular good old-fashioned cross shape, it's really only 5% reduction from this a larger the AOE mechanic. But again, when you compare it to the Brigantine, which we said is you know, only four to six percent mitigation, in almost all instances of AOE damage, the army plate here on the left reduces damage more than the Brigandine does, upwards of 15%. Now, sure, we're not really talking about the extra 200 to 400 HP that the Brigandine gets you, but I don't think 200 to 400 HP in this like power creep balance of the game is, is really all that important in, in this discussion. I think on average, reducing all these AOEs by 10 to 15% instead of four to 5% is, is more of a benefit. And so some closing thoughts to me, the Maximilian armor, still the best armor, that's number one. Uh, and unofficial number two, so on all those TMR options. Those are all exceptionally strong abilities for a lot of characters, so the TMR armors are also a great option. But from a, a damage mitigation perspective, the army plate, I think, is better than the Brigandine, although the Brigandine does give you a little bit more HP. I think the damage mitigation is stronger, and the army plate does technically give you an extra 7% crit evade. You know, that, if we go back, that total of 15 crit evade is likely getting cut in half because of trust stones where on your trust stone set one of the stones should give you 19 crit evade if you're rolling at max which means the second highest value gets cut in half that's the way the stat stacking works so this 15 crit evade really is more like seven it's not amazing but you know, it's certainly something to at least still put into a bullet point. And, and that's really all I wanted to cover. It's really just examining the comparisons, quite honestly, kind of process of elimination and of what you have for alternative armor options in some of these teams that do have two to three armor users at this point. The army plate is likely your second best option here, in my opinion, provided you don't need something like a TMR or a damage accessory or a bow tie or something that has some weird, unique utility attached to it, if that makes sense. So yeah, don't miss out on farming one. Obviously, this is a mechanic that they're leaning into far more often nowadays. We're seeing a lot more units with AoE crush in general, so I'm sure that's not going away anytime soon in terms of relying on the AoE of the Brigandine. So I'll pause there, but that's my thoughts for today. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll talk to y'all later.